Regular people means test just as bad as the government does when you're asking for aid. And I don't think most people even realize they're doing it. But basically, as one of the people that completely doesn't pass either set of criteria, I want to talk about that a little bit. When I go to get food stamps and they give them to me, the, the conditions are pretty simple. It's basically like, are you broke? Okay, here's your card. And what they mean by that is various forms of income and assets, and it boils down to, within reason, pretty much, do you have anything you can sell for food? And uh, they make some exclusions so that I don't have to sell my house, right? And uh, I think I can have a car. I don't have a car, but I mean, I think I'm allowed to have a car. But I'm not allowed to have savings. I'm not allowed to have stocks or whatever. And I think I'm I'm allowed to have like collectibles and stuff. Like they don't want to know if I have figures I could sell or, you know, they don't, I, I'm allowed to have stuff, right? As a tangent, that's kind of like how actual communism would work. You could still have property because there's a difference between private property and personal property. You could have personal property, but you couldn't own a factory. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> like you couldn't have capital, capitalism, you know, anyway. Uh, and then, but that's just food and it's very restricted. It's like, yo, here, I will spend money on your behalf and tell you what you can and can't spend it on. And it will be completely tracked. There's no privacy. There will be a complete record of everything you buy. And those are part of the conditions for getting it. And that's kind of a taste of the future. You're going to get your UBI but it will be in CBDCs and they'll completely control where all the money goes and how fast you can spend. I mean, it'll, it'll just be totally controlled. And I'm like, okay, whatever, fine. That's better than people dying homeless and dying of the cold in their car and working full time and living in a car, you know, whatever. Then there's stuff like disability and that gets more complicated because they want to be like, you can't, can you work, you know, or are you a viable slave? And that gets into a thing. 13th Amendment versus wage slavery is like, am I being drafted if they tell me that I have to uh, work or be homeless, work or not be able to get dental care, you know? So I apply for Medicaid too, and I'm in Kentucky, so I get the... Uh, Medicaid extension, so it's similar to food card. The requirements are very very much the same. It's like, are you broke? Okay, here's your medical card. And great, because that's the only medical insurance I've ever had in my life. Like, I've never been able to have a job, but I'm not technically disabled, apparently, and we're going to get into that. And I think it's interesting, you know, it's like I'm, I'm a member of all these reform communities and subreddits and stuff and, and my Twitter base. And, and I assume the people that are seeing this and have subscribed to me on Substack or whatever are reformers, too. We basically agree that corporations are evil and the government's corrupt and things of that sort. But I find I have to say something materially. The government has helped me infinitely more than people have arguably more than my family has. And I love my family. But at the same time, they have limited resources. So there is a ceiling on what they can give me. And without, you know, completely destroying themselves. And I like to think that I, I ask for the bare minimum. I live at the extent, at the end of two extension cords. So I, I, and I live in a single room. I don't have a washer and dryer. I don't have a hot water heater. This is the only room with power. Uh, I am as frugal as is physically possible, as far as I can tell. Uh, I have an Instant Pot and an office fridge, and I pipe water in here. And uh, my cooking is like from a toaster oven and the Instant Pot and a coffee machine. And that's it. The rest is can opener, you know? And I get the food card and Walmart groceries. And that's keeping me alive and it's keeping me from being homeless. And what my family essentially gives me is rent only it's not rent because they own it. So 
you know, they're, they're like basically not kicking me out. And also they cover the utilities and they share their internet with me. And I get some cash from them for stuff like cat litter, cat food. And that, those are my only ongoing expenses. I used to have domain payments and uh, $30 a month for phone, but I don't do that anymore. So really it's just electricity, food. Well, no, well, they don't give me food. It's like, so it's electricity, Wi-Fi, and the water bill. But that one's complicated because the water systems are kind of shared. So it's hard to say. Um, so it's, it's definitely a lot, right? They, they help a lot. They keep me from being homeless. And if you regard me not paying rent as a loss, which corporations and, and economics professor types do, you know, they, they, they look at expected gains. And if you don't get expected gains, that counts as a loss in their world, which is weird. Failure to gain to me is not the same as loss. Like, let's say I play the lottery and I just expect to win and then I don't. Did I just lose $5 million? No, I failed to gain $5 million. So, you know, is it a loss? Whatever. Uh, but I've contributed in return. Like I had uh, a bunch of Bitcoin, but nobody listened to me. And I, I knew it was going to be something, but I had literally no resources. No one would listen to me. So I tried to uh, day trade and ex expand them a bit. And that didn't work out. And then finally, the site where I was doing the day trading and storing stuff, Mt. Gox, got hacked, which was totally an exit scam. I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go to my grave believing that. Uh, but in fairness, I didn't lose that much there. I lost maybe like five Bitcoin or something there at the time, which was really nothing. It was, it was a small amount. Um, of course, it's huge now. Uh, and but I but I kept a minimum amount for me telling myself this is going to be my retirement. This is going to be my life savings before, you know, the government included that in income. Right. So in a sense, it's good that I lost all my coin because now I'm sure that they'll start. It won't be long before they start asking as an asset because they already ask if you have stock and stuff. Right. I'm not allowed to have savings if I want to get a medical card and a food card. And while food is currently my large ongoing expense, largest, you know, most consistent expense that I get from the government, the medical one is the real deal. Because, I mean, if, if I hit my head and need an MRI, that's thousands and thousands of dollars that I will never, ever be able to come up with. So I have to have that card. And I don't even know what my Imitrex costs without insurance. It, I believe it's, you know, over $200. And if you've ever had a migraine, you don't want them to last 15 hours. You want it to go away in 10 minutes. So, I mean, that's, that is super fucking similar to the threat of being mugged. You know, it's like, you will do this or I will hurt you. And ultimately, you know, medical is like, you will do this or I will kill you. And so I'm, you know, not allowed to have savings, so I'm doing what I'm allowed to do, which is nothing. Like, <laughs> I can't risk it because I, I don't think I can get approved again. They keep changing the rules and they make stuff hard. It's easier to maintain it than it is to get a new one. It's like applying for a whole new ID versus renewing your ID. You know, getting your first driver's license as opposed to getting your license renewed. You get grandfathered in. And... I just can't risk stuff, you know, because it's, it's, it's a, it's a permanent asset going away. <clears throat> and where I'm going with all of that is to give context because I have to give context because people, when you ask for help, the first thing they start asking essentially is, well, do you deserve it? You know, when they're not asking what's in it for me and by having a presence online 
I'm essentially asking for help. You know, do I deserve it? You probably assume no. You probably say no. And that hurts. You know, that's a thing. Ugh. I wish I could snort fire and get all the hair out. Anyway, uh, I'm just, I want to point out that people, because it can always be worse, and there's always new people being added to the pool, and those people will always get to skip in line in front of me. I mean, every homeless person, actual living on the street homeless person, has more of a claim to help than I do. I'm not an idiot. I get that, right? It can always be worse. But here's the thing. It's always going to be worse. There's always going to be, because of design, there's always going to be a bunch of people ahead of me in line. So I'm never, ever going to get any help from anybody except for my family who will not be able to do it forever because aging and we don't cure that either, you know, and escalating prices and escalating interest rates and the collapsing dollar, you know, what is it? A trillion dollars added to the debt every hundred days. That's going to default. Eventually we're going to have civil war, you know, I don't see, I mean, or a coup. I don't, I don't see how we can get through this without some kind of massive disaster. And man, the people that run the planet are completely cool with that. They are totally happy with a disaster coming because they'll profit off of it, just like they did from the Great Depression and every crash since. And I keep telling people the truth and everything, and nobody fucking cares. And so it's like, and that's my value proposition to humanity. It's like, hi, I have truth to offer. Do you care? Ultimately, no. Like, so all I can get is what everybody gets. So my only hope is contributing towards this rising tide to hopefully, you know, because I'm like clinging onto a cliffside while everybody else is treading water down below me. That's basically, you know, the homeless and everything. And I'm not even sure if I would survive the fall. I certainly wouldn't survive the swim for very long. So, you know, I have, I'm down to one real life friend. I have one person that I can speak to in real life, but I now make a very, very, very concerted effort not to ask for anything because that's how I lost all my friends. You know, friends cost money and I was costing them money to be my friend. So I, I get it. You know, and I have nothing like I used to have a place that they could hang out that I could offer, but I don't even have that anymore. So. I just feel incredibly trapped and nobody wants to help. And I guess that's fine. Nobody owes me anything, you know. I mean, I've, I've given out massive loans, but. The loans I've given out have been to people who either disappeared or consistently helped me back, you know, family. And that's like, they don't owe me anything because they keep me alive. They keep me from being homeless. And it's hard to figure out what to do. That's why I'm rambling because like I daisy chain out, I game out my, my options and everybody has advice and I can't tell them why it doesn't work without creating a whole life story. I have to give them a book and it always ends the same way. I did have one guy, thanks Brad, who uh, around Christmas gave me an Amazon gift card and I, I, I re-gifted it. I, I, I used it to buy a gift for someone I love. Because, you know, that was the suckiest thing about Christmas for me is not being able to get presents for the few people that I know that are left. You know, I would love to get presents for everybody I know. You know, I, I, I have a guild in Poe with like 50 people in it. So I know people all over the world, but they're not real friends, right? But at the same time, if I had money, I'd be completely passing out gaming laptops just because, you know, I did have money at one point And that's basically what I did with it. I gave away pretty much everything I've ever had. So, except for stuff, you know, that nobody else really wants. Stuff that I couldn't sell on eBay for 10 bucks, you know, or, or, or like, and, and, and by 10 bucks, I mean, after 
shipping and fees and everything else, you know, because they take a fucking half, ultimately. I used to sell on eBay and Amazon before it was a massive, massive scam and tax on the poor and fence for stolen goods, you know, so it's such a mess now. So I'm rambling because I don't have a future as far as I can tell, and neither does the country, but I feel like I want to at least be in a position of survival when things go down and, and make the decision, you know, do I want to continue like that trillion dollar debt thing, man, that that could play out a number of ways. Right. And there are some endurable, I can imagine some endurable uh, plot lines that might follow some timelines or whatever, you know, some ways that could play out. And, uh, Every time I go to think about ways to materially improve my situation, you know, get some warm running water, it's like, I just can't do it. I can't, I can't be like, please give me 10 bucks, right? I can't make a GoFundMe. I can't do a Patreon. I have a Patreon, but I, like, if anybody ever actually signed up for it, I'd have to cancel it because I'd have to start reporting that income. And the reported income would cost me my food card, it would cost me my medical card. I can't do that. Like, uh, I have a, I don't have a paid tier on Substack because there's only one person, my dad, he signed up as a paid guy, but it's not going to charge him until I create a paid tier. But I would never do that, one, because it's my dad, and two, because uh, I would need to get enough money from that consistently all at once to make giving up my food card and my medical card make sense to make them a safe action. Otherwise, I'm just gambling with my mortgage equivalent, you know? And that's crazy to me. Like, fiscal irresponsibility is baked into the system. That's how they make slaves. That That's why working is slavery, because they it, it doesn't... It's just to survive, and there's no security. It's not pay. It's It's a threat. And we could get out of this if we would all just stop, right? I have stopped because I don't have a choice because I'm autistic and I have CP and apparently I'm crazy or whatever, but not enough to successfully apply for disability. Hey, if you're a disability attorney, I'd love to talk to you. But, you know, I had one of those before and it was a complete fucking scam. All she did was send me my papers that the government was sending me so fill these out and send them back to me. And then she'd mail them to the government. And I'm like, man, I could do that myself. And I tried and I screwed up my interview, right? They, I, I think I was doing okay. I told them, I was like, this is crazy. Like if, I, if I'm too disabled to apply, you're going to t say that I am thus, I went over the catch 22 and the judge was like, no, you're defending yourself pretty well. But he didn't, you know, a rule in my favor, what they did at the end was they said that I could assemble fishing reels and it didn't, it didn't occur to me to go, no, I can't look at my fucking hand. No, I can't, you know, I have trouble with stuff like that. Like I can't play piano. I tried. I know how, I know there are people that pay, play piano with their toes. I don't fucking get it. I've tried. I can't fucking do it. I can't do fucking chords. Right. Every suggestion you possibly have for me, as far as I can tell, I have a no for like, nope, that won't work. Nope. Looked at it. Nope. Tried that. Nope. That's lie. That's a scam. You know, a lot of people, when they start suggesting options, man, and I, I wrote a post about this. Like, I talked to the AI. I went through all of it. And uh, the AI basically, and uh, what I was saying earlier, sorry for the rambling and losing track, but it's a web, not a fucking road. Uh, Brad got me the, the gift card and everything, and I explained my situation to him. And there was another guy online, too, that I did and provided video evidence, you know, of things and which I can't make public fun stuff. Uh, 
and they're like, fuck, you really are trapped, aren't you? And it's like, yeah, this is how people end up homeless because they're trapped. It's like, if you could like, listen to me, do I sound like a complete moron? I may be wrong about stuff, but obviously I have intelligence and I can articulate myself, right? I'm a person. There are plenty of people sleeping in a fucking box tonight that sound like I do. What does that tell you? That tells you that the whole fucking thing is rigged and broken. So when I tell you I'm fucking trapped, just take it on faith for a second. I'm fucking trapped. You know? What the fuck do I do? And everybody is the same. Like, you know, we can be like, oh, it's the government's a piece of shit for not giving me disability, for not giving people basic income, whatever. But you're the same way too, you know? Like, like I said, all I really got from a stranger ever was that card from that guy, a random YouTube guy. And that means the world to me because it's the only one I ever got, right? But I can't ask for more, right? Because, like I said, it needs to be a fucking income. I'm past buy me a coffee, you know? And he gave me more than a fucking coffee. But I'm, I need thousands and thousands. Really, what I need is millions to put in a bank account for interest and be like, okay, now insurance is paid for, you know, interest, property taxes are paid for. If I, if I fall and hit my head or, or catch leukemia, I'm covered. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Why do I need that level of fucking income? because I don't live in a culture and I basically am having to build the, that level of money is the same as building a city. It's the same as, as a, a, a village, you know, it's like Robinson Crusoe. I need to subsistence farm on this fucking money. And so I don't know what to do. You know, I start thinking about, stuff I can do, lean, what directions to lean in. And it's like, should I get the fuck out of the country? It's like, well, I can't even get my ID renewed because it's four miles away in the center of Justice Plaza or some shit. And it's like, I don't want to fucking go there. It's scary. Those people are dangerous. It's like, it's like going into gang territory. So yeah, I had to, uh, answer a message and go do some chores and stuff and now i'm back and i reviewed the video up to this point so i know where i was but yeah uh i can't go get my id renewed because i'm not even sure i have all the documents and it would be like a physically destroying four mile walk and i don't have anybody to ask and for a ride or whatever that wouldn't be more drama than it's worth so um, and like I said, it's, it's fucking, I just, it, 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 it feels like a risk to my life being around police. I'm not a criminal or anything. It probably nothing would happen, but it's like, it's like stepping into a silverback enclosure. These fucking people are dangerous and they can shoot me with impunity. Like there is a uh, Reddit thing. You know, there's, there's like a whole genre of bullshit videos that make me crack up. And they are the clever versus cops genre. There's, there's like this law student and he, he's in a, a college and the, the cop is asking him for his ID and the law student is being a smart ass back to him about rights and stuff. And I'm like, that's great and everything, but that cop could totally just shoot that guy and he'd probably get manslaughter at the fucking absolute most. Cops are never get fucking actual jail time for anything unless they cause a city to burn like, you know, George Floyd. And so, you know, it's scary to be around them. It's scary to be in a town because do you hear stories about that all the time of them kicking down the wrong fucking door, you know, and well, you know, they, they investigate themselves and find no wrongdoing. Shocker. And I'm in fucking Kentucky, man. You think your cops are shitty? Imagine mine, right? Jesus, the cops in California sound like they're from here. So just imagine what the ones from here sound like. 
So yeah, I don't want to go there. But practically, even if I can get through that, and I probably could, I, I could just, you know, pound a bunch of fucking coffee and be like, I can do this, you know? Uh, even if I get through that phase of it, there's still, I'm not sure I have the proper documentation now because it expired. It fully expired a while ago. They might want a social security card, which of course is made out of fucking toilet paper and I don't know where it is. And they might want a fucking birth certificate, which again is made out of fucking toilet paper and I don't know where it is. It's like, I, I, like in anticipation of my house being either taken away or collapsing, I looked into public housing here and they wanted me to get three letters from people who are not immediate family members. Can't do that because I don't have fucking friends because I can't afford friends because I'm broke and I don't have a home really to invite them to. I have a room I can sleep and live in, right? But it doesn't have a fucking sofa. I can't bring people here. You know, I can't network. I can't maintain fucking friendships. Uh, what else? They wanted my social security, birth certificate, some kind of background check. And I'm sure eventually there'll be a drug test, which is fine. I'll pass it. It, But you see my fucking point? And they wanted a current ID, which I don't have. So I emailed them back. I was like, I can't get some of that stuff. I don't know the people. And my ID is expired. Did I expire? The concept of a fucking expired ID is hilarious to me. So yeah, unless I can jump from nothing to four jobs, because I mean, you know, four minimum wage jobs is basically what it takes to survive. How many how many would it take to buy a fucking house? And I can't get anybody to fucking care about anything that matters. Certainly not me. You know, my value proposition, like I was trying to explain before, is I bring truth. Nobody fucking wants any. Nobody's fucking interested at all. You know, so what do I do? I make fucking stupid videos on YouTube and put them on Substack. That's what I do. Have a great day.